Uh, we'll speak to the head of the Kolebu Plastics and Benz Unit, Dr. Ampuma. His outfit is expected to benefit from a thousand kilometer bike ride by the British High Commissioner, Ian Walker. The British High Commissioner's adventure seeks to raise funds to support the Benz Unit. Dr. Opokuwari Ampoma is the consultant plastic surgeon and the director here at the National Reconstructive Plastic and Ben Center at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. And we are here for one reason, to find out what the center does and then also how you and I can help so that they can deliver their services effectively. Another reason why we are here is also because the British High Commissioner to Ghana, Ian Walker, is embarking on a bike tour to raise funds to help the center. And so we'll find out from Doug exactly what they'll be using those donations for. Welcome to join us. Um, give us a brief history about this place in Kolebu, this particular center. Okay, so um, the, the National Reconstructive Plastic Surgery and Bed Center was established in May 1997. Um, prior to that, um, plastic surgery, there was no established plastic surgery service uh, within the country. Um, but around about 1994, about you know, one of the surgeons in the country uh, returned uh, from abroad, and that's Dr. Lane, and then um, Professor Jack Mustadi also visited this unit and uh, I mean, visited the country. So, okay. And uh, he realized that there was no established plastic surgery practice in Ghana, and so he had a discussion with then President, uh, President Rawlings, and uh, you know, President Rawlings challenged him to build this one <laughs> since he's seen the need. And so he took it on, and so they established a project uh, and a charity which saw to the building of this unit. So there was support from both governments, uh, private sector, you know, Rotary clubs and various other organizations coming came together okay. to get this unit established. So what's your success rate? Well I think I think I think the unit has been highly successful. I can't give you a exact figure because the the figure will depend on which condition you are talking about. Okay, yeah. well, averagely, all the things that you've been doing since the establishment in 1997, you move faces. I mean, you've trained surgeons now and everything. Looking back today, if you are asked, how are you doing with regards to the surgeries that you do with all the services you provide? I think I think I think that's one of the sad things about this uh, working in this environment because it's like as a people we lack a certain amount of self-belief so or we are not ready to believe good things about our own because i've had many instances where like let me give you an exa example there's a gentleman whose child was mauled by a dog one of these wild dogs the, the dog served this child so this child came to me the ears were torn you know the scalp was scattered you know then you know, everybody thought this child was going to die okay came as an emergency i was called and then we came in, went, you know, took the child uh, to theater, you know, fixed this child up, okay, because everything was in prison, you know, and, you know, the, you know I shared the pictures with that, you know. So we fixed this child up completely, okay. Child was on admission for about five days. By seven days, the wounds were healing nicely. Sent them home, reviewed them in a week. Everything was fine. And I didn't hear from them again, okay. Only to meet, then one of my professor friends, you know, uh, met me. And uh, was telling me that apparently what had happened was because I, these people I didn't see this people again. And so what had happened was that after the two weeks, they took this child out of the country for a checkup, thinking that you know because this Ghana maybe we didn't do something right, so they just going to check. So when they went uh, you know abroad, and they, they, they you know they showed the child to the doctors there. Yeah. The doctor there. You know, uh, asked, okay, why what was it wrong with the child? And then they said they gave a story. And then they showed, but they had shared the pictures of the, you know, before and before, after, you know, with the child. So they shared the pictures of how the thing was, you know, and then, uh, you know, then they were looking at the child. So the doctors there told the man that, you know what, like, even here, we're not sure we could have achieved this kind of result. So uh, we, don't, we don't know what you are doing here, but go back and go and thank that doctor. So he met this professor and he called, of course he was feeling bad, he couldn't mm -hmm. come to me, mm -hmm. you know, so he told this professor colleague who informed me, but we see those kind of things all the time. I know that our system is not perfect, but sometimes like we are not even ready to believe that something good can come out can of come our, out, yeah. our, you know, and that is, is actually very sad because it's a, it's a reflection of our own lack of belief in ourselves because we have very 
basic things that we, we can't take care of. Yes, still, we are spending um, a large amount of resources on things that really do not make that kind of impact on, on yeah. the people's lives. So I think we need, we all need, yeah. but I think that's a conversation that we all need to get involved in. So averagely, how many people do you see in a month? Um, in a month, um, look at our outpatient, inpatient, in a month, we're probably seeing um, about probably between 800, 900 people in a month. Wow. That's supposed to be outpatient, inpatient, outpatient, yeah. yeah. Are you adequately staffed? Um, the staffing situation was quite bad, but I must, I'm happy, I'm, 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 at least now, I think it's improved a lot because um, over the last um, few months, um, the Ministry of Health has posted yeah. um, a number of staff. Uh, to, so I'll say thank you to the Minister and the Chief Director for heeding my call because I, 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 you know, I was, I was gradually, actually on the, uh, um, you know, wrote some letters back and forth to try and they, 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 they've been gracious enough to allocate a number of staff. So I think the staff situation has improved uh, significantly. Although I must say that I mean, we could still do it more, but yeah. I think it's a lot better than it used to be. So I think we are grateful for that. Okay. I remember um, one of the times I came here was June 3, af the aftermath of June 3, when we had so much, so many of the people who came here, and then we also had a lot of donations and all of that. Was that able to help you out? Yes, you see, that, 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 so that brings us back to the resource question. Generally, if you take the bands that we, the bands, for instance, okay, you find that the bands survival rate is around about maybe about sixty percent, that that average, okay. Now, in the case of the cohorts that came, and uh, the June third, okay, we had about twenty-one patients and we lost only one person, mm -hmm. okay. So that's the success rate, which is, you know, probably you know, not a 90% success rate for that cohort, okay? But what made the difference was that for the June 3rd victims, mm -hmm. okay, because Ghanaians showed a lot of generosity and okay. donated generously, you know, dressings, you know, some people give cash, some people give in kind, that kind of thing. So there was a lot of resources to deal with these, these uh, uh, cases. In that instance, if you didn't have the resources, you may not have been able to take care of all the Yeah, things. so we got the resources. Because I was saying that without the resources, we wouldn't have been able to take care of them. But because they, you know, there was that uh, display of generosity by the uh, you know, general uh, Ghanaian public, for which we are very grateful. You know, these patients, you know, because this thing happened in June, mm -hmm. by end of August, most of the patients had been, we had virtually operated and discharged most of the patients. Yes, and which was like a kind of record because he, I mean, before that, the ordinary patient who comes in will have to cough up their resources for, you know, look for resources from their family, from friends, yeah. and that kind of thing. So, so, so then did it trickle down to them as well? Exactly. So, <laughs> so, so what happened was that because of that generous, uh, uh, that, that, that benevolence that we, yeah. we received, we, we, we had enough to actually take care of all this. So, of course, the other patients who came in around that time and even long after were still benefiting from some of the, uh, you know, the resources that were, uh, you yeah. know. Were, but the, were, that must have been a very tough period also for the centre, was it? Yes, I mean, it was... Trying moments. Yeah, no, it, it was tough, but that's what we are trained to do. So for us, as far as we are concerned, you know, yes, there was a lot, but then if you, that's what we train for. And so if you have patients and you've been given the resources to deal with them, then that is, the, you know, you're happy because you know you are making an impact, you are seeing the results of your work, and as the patients recover and they go home one by one, you know, we are all happy and we all celebrate, you know, and so in fact, the last thing we went to, we all celebrated that, look, this is the patient, you know, you understand? So, so, so for us, you know, I'd rather have that kind of uh, uh, bed, you know, where you have, uh, uh, you know, the resources to work with and you're able to make an impact on people than to have a situation where, because there's lack of resources, there's no, you know, you, you can't do much and people are there, you know, that, I, I don't So then when it comes to resources, someone is doing something for you, the British High Commissioner yeah. to Ghana, he's decided to go on a, a bike tour to yeah. raise funds yeah. to resource this place. What exactly do you need? Yes, yeah, so, uh, we, yes, we, we need a number of things. So we, we're looking at uh, uh, things like patient monitors, uh, the, you know, the stuff that we need we use to monitor individual patients because we do have monitors, yes, but um, Personally, I 
prefer that every patient in the Benz ward has their own monitor, like a monitor on them, you know, that is dedicated to them, not like use this one when they move here and that kind of thing, right? So patient monitors, we have things at the bath trolleys where we wash the patients, uh, you know, that, those are things. And then the, one of the other things that we should also consider is that depending on how much is able to raise, okay, we look at, we look thinking that uh, uh, in the area of training, that uh, we would also like to set up a micro surgery training lab. Okay, we've got some of the resources um, already donated uh, for that, but with a little top of funding, we could also set up a micro surgery training lab because we uh, micro surgery is one of the key skills that a plastic surgeon comes on board with. Okay, and that's what enables us to be able to, like when a hand is severed, we're able to put it back and all that. We've had a number of successes in this center. With Do you have one? People, pardon? You said you need that. No, it's like we have, you see, we have a microscope. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the moment we just have one so supposing two cases show up we need to know how do you do you know that kind of thing uh -huh. so uh, let's say in a, let's say in a mass casualty situation road traffic has a lot of people injured you need to be able to uh, operate on more than one person at a time so that's the person. so as you've you've got people who have been trained in the skill of micro surgery uh, and then we also want to train some more people so that's what we're trying to kind of strengthen our capacity in that area to be able to deal with some of these cases so we set up a lab where young doctors who rotate through the, the units can have this facility so that we can help them to acquire those skills because um, we, what we should be aware of is that this center is here but it's located in Accra. So one of the mm -hmm. patients who gets injured in Tamale, mm -hmm. okay, by the time that they are transferred to Accra, it may be too late to preserve that, that, that bit. But if the doctors who are rotating through these units have access to this kind of training, then if the patient comes to Tamale or Sunyani or some other center, then there will be somebody on the ground who can at least perform some of these uh, procedures so that they can save more lives and more limbs. You can also support, and that's exactly what Ian Walker is doing. You can join them on the bike tour and also help the center. For joining us, my name is Hannah Odami. And I know one person who will be joining that uh, bike ride is Kojo Yangson. And Kojo Yangson had been riding since infancy. He's very good at it though and uh, we're hoping that his skills will come in handy as he embarks on this, as he complements the efforts of the British High Commissioner. But we also know that uh, diplomacy uh, meets challenge. Great and determination this August as the British High Commissioner to Ghana. His Excellency Ian Walker uh, cycles across our country Ghana from north to south covering over a thousand kilometers. Now it's dubbed the Ghana Grant. This adventurous journey seeks to rekindle conversations about health, our natural environment, tourism, and so much more. Overcoming challenges while raising funds for the plastic surgery and Benz unit of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Now, this is going to span 10 days. His Excellency Ian Walker will be cycling through Ghana, interacting with um, extraordinary Ghanaians while making intermittent steps and stops to experience the beauty and warmth of our country. Remember? The challenge is not just to cover a thousand kilometers and more, but also to raise funds for the plastic surgery and bench unit of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. So this is what you need to do by way of support. So you have some cash around you want to spend uh, to uh, help society. Make sure that you use the following MTN short codes. Uh, hash 700, hash um, 9 star no star 700 star 9 hash follow the prompts and make sure you type in the code the Ghana grant or you can also do so through other relevant platforms like voter cash through the number 020-7566-351 or you can also pay into an account and it is with a standard chartered bank it has the account number 01001040618 or you can follow uh, through the handle and not only on Twitter but all social media handles at UK in Ghana. Well, please make sure that you use the hashtag the Ghana Grant. We want it to trend and also add join you to it. The multimedia group is proud to be the media partner. Mm. And every Friday is a relationship day for us here on the AM show. And so we have captioned it, Dear AM. This is what we want you to do. For all the emotional, relationship, marital, and couple stories that you may encounter, you have experienced, you have heard of, please make sure that you send 
great samurai story stewards and they by way of choice from our editorial team will become the focus of our discussions every Friday on the segment Dear AM. It is a relationship segment so this is what we want you to do. We want you to send us those stories could be related to you. You may have heard, read, also uh, may have experienced either from somebody who is an acquaintance, your friend, your relative, etc. through the email info at myjoyonline.com. It should be on your screens. If it's not, again, just follow my lips. Info at myjoyonline.com. And please make sure that you send those great stories of yours about relationships. It could be some of the highs, some of the lows you or you have had uh, by way of experience through info at myjoyonline.com. And it is every Friday. Dear AM is a segment.